Remember how new money is created when a bank makes a loan. Well, when someone repays the loan, the opposite process happens, and money is actually destroyed. It effectively disappears from the economy entirely. This is vitally important because it means that if we, the public, start reducing our debts by collectively borrowing less and repaying more, then the amount of money in the economy will actually start to shrink. If we all collectively reduced our debts by one billion, then the money supply of the economy would actually fall by a billion. There will be a billion pounds less money changing hands in the economy. If we significantly reduce the debt, then the shrinkage in the money supply could actually cause the economy to slow down or grind to a halt. Just think of the problems caused when banks refused to lend during the credit crunch. So, although we all think it's a good idea to get out of debt, and most of us are trying to get out of debt, as long as we keep the current system, it will be impossible to reduce our collective debt without slowing down and potentially destroying the economy. So, let's see exactly how money is destroyed when a loan is repaid. Let's start with Robert, who still owes ten thousand pounds to Barclays, but has spent the money, leaving his bank balance at zero. After a few months, Robert decides to pay down a thousand pounds of the loan. He transfers the money from a bank account with another bank to his bank account at Barclays. We won't show the central bank reserves on this process because, as we saw with the clearing process, any change in the reserves would probably be cancelled out by payments going in the opposite direction. I won't change things in any significant way. Now Robert still owes ten thousand pounds to Barclays, but also has an account with Barclays that now has a balance of a thousand pounds. As a result, Barclays has a liability to Robert of a thousand pounds. That's the numbers in Robert's bank balance, and Robert has a liability to Barclays of ten thousand pounds. When Robert called Barclays and says that he wants to pay off a thousand pounds of the loan, all Barclays does is reduce Robert's bank balance to zero and reduce the outstanding loan by a thousand. In effect, both the asset and the liability are cancelled out against each other. Because the money supply in the hands of the public is made up of bank-created numbers in people's bank accounts, repaying loans in this way actually reduces the amount of money in the economy. Money, the type of money that the public use, has been destroyed in the act of repaying the loan. Of course, now that Robert's loan has been partly repaid, Barclays might go hunting for another lending opportunity and make a new loan to replace this. In which case, new money will be created and the money supply will grow again. But if banks are scared to lend, for example, following a major financial crisis and the public are trying to reduce their debts, then the money supply of the economy will shrink. Here it is in the simplest form. If we want more money in the economy, we need to go into more debt. And if we want less debt in the economy, we have to have less money.